Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner. I am always pleased to be joined by the one and only Matthew Rosenberg. How are you, mate? I'm doing excellent. I'm always pleased to be here. So yeah, that, oh, thanks, man. You're too kind. Of, and thanks for joining us to talk about a subject close uh, to both of our hearts, which is uh, the Joker, but but specifically, your new DC Joker book, uh, the Joker, the man who stopped laughing. That so, is correct. Matthew, what can you tell us all about it, mate? Yeah, uh, I'm really excited about this book. Uh, the Joker, I mean, I don't, I don't think I have to pitch the Joker to people. He's one of the most iconic villains in all of history. He's, he's one of the true great characters. And um, we're coming off uh, James Tynan, Guillaume March, a, a whole slew of amazing artists doing a, a great Joker book. Um, that that just wrapped that's that sort of sent the joker on a path this is the follow-up to that um we have a new series it's a new ongoing book that that brings him in a new direction the the thing about the joker that's complicated and this is what took us sort of a long time to nail down is you there's such a rich history and so much going on with the character and you need to honor that and we want to really honor what james and and everyone did on the previous book but we also wanted to completely blow everything up and make it crazy and new. And so that was sort of a long time to, to be on that razor of trying to figure it out. And I, I'm really proud of where we're going with this because it is both a, a real love letter to the history of the Joker and also a real attempt to like push him in new territory and do some new crazy stuff with him. So where does the, where does the storyline begin for this book, mate? Yeah, so uh, at the end of James and, and their run, the Joker had left Gotham City and he was out in the wild and he was sort of looking for his place. Uh, something happened in that gap um, while he was gone and he's now returned to Gotham and he has decided how to, he's come up with a plan to retake Gotham as as the the top of the food chain of villains, as it were. And so he has a, a plan, but of course, there are a lot of very bad people in Gotham, uh, and they don't uh, they abhor a vacuum, as it were. So while he was gone, people like Black Mask and Two Face filled in a lot of a lot of his territory, and so he's come back to a very unfriendly city, and he's trying to figure out what to do and how to elevate himself, how to return the prestige to the brand of the Joker, as it were. And while that's happening, um, there is another character who is a, a bit mysterious, who is looking for him, who is hunting him, who um, was wronged by the Joker and wants to make good, wants to, wants to set things right, as it were. And so uh, the story is, is both of their stories, the, the Joker and the man hunting the Joker. We go back and forth between the two of them. Brilliant, mate. How many issues have you got in this book? As is many, as, as, many as people yeah. will buy. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I have a, I submitted a, a pretty ambitious plan to DC and um, Ben Abernathy and, and the editorial team at DC were really enthusiastic about it. And, and I was sure that we were gonna get some, you definitely can't do that. And they, uh, the closest we got were some, we don't know if you can do that, but let's find out. So that's, that's where we're going. We have a long road ahead of us, but it is, um, it's definitely one of the, the most ambitious and, and strangest and wildest things I've ever written. So I'm really excited about it. Oh man, what, what better character to add those epithets to than the Joker, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, you know, it's funny because the Joker is, you know, an 80 plus year history on the character. Uh, so beloved and so many versions and and people all have these touchstones of him and and who he is and and i think the real fun of it is is trying to make your own mark and and trying to touch on all those things and so we're really we're really sort of honoring everything that's come before us as best we can and while still trying to make a book that people are like that for some people will be like, that's my Joker. The, yeah. the Joker in that book is my Joker. And that's, that's, you know, I think everyone has that. I think everyone has their, their iconic Batman, their iconic Joker. And that's what we're trying to do is make an iconic Joker for someone to, to claim as their own. And, and no better endeavor, mate. I think um, <clears throat> what's very interesting <clears throat> is given the, um, the, uh, the, the iconic nature 
of the character and the relatively inflexible central conceit of the character outside of that the joker more than any other villain in literature popular culture is incredibly flexible and at this point in the, in the middle of this golden age for comic book writing yeah. there's just so many vivid versions of the joker that are also wildly different yeah yeah i mean i think you know i i remember I mean, I remember being a kid and reading The Killing Joke and it and it burning into my brain and this just being like, well, this is the Joker. Like, this is who the Joker must be. And then you keep going and you come across all these other versions and whether, you know, whether it's the cartoon version or, or you know, the Batman the Animated Series version or, or you know, Jack Nicholson or Heath Ledger or, or whoever doing it, there, there's all these versions and, and I, I just always, but to me, Alan Moore, uh, the the Killing Joke Joker was always my Joker. And then when Scott Snyder introduced him back into his run, I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> this is <laughs> something clicked for me that I was like, there doesn't have to be a singular Joker. Like there doesn't have to be the one version. There 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 can be pieces and and things. And and that really has stuck with me. That like yeah, everyone is everyone is out to take this character and and just push him a little further and see what they can do. And, and it's such, you know, it's such a great character to do it with because he is, you know, he's everything from, from hilariously funny to, to, I think the scariest villain in all of comics and, and like a character who can run that gamut is, is so rich with potential. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, he's been, you know, the ultimate villain. He's been played heroically. You know, the, yeah. he's so elastic, right? I, and yeah. that, that was sort of never ceases to amaze me about, again, about what appears to be a rigid concept. It's not rigid at all. It's incre it's incredibly flexible. Yeah, the yeah the the one constant of the Joker is unpredictability. Is yeah. just that like you don't actually know what you're ever going into, and that's that's sort of a, a mantra for us on the book. It's just that like you never quite should have your feet under the ground with this character. You, you should never feel like, okay, I, I know what the next steps are. I know where this is headed. I know what he's doing. It, it should always be more dangerous than that. It should feel more, it, it, he's just reckless and he's just wild. And like, that is a fun, you know, terrifying place to be working, to, to just be crafting that is, is, is the most invigorating and the most nerve wracking way to write a character. And I, I love it. Yeah, I, I think I think that's very interesting. What can you tell me? Uh, can you give me a bit more detail on your fellow creators on the book? Yeah, um, the so the main book was 22 page story, uh, like any wonderful DC comic uh, that is drawn by uh, Carmine, Di Gi Carmine Di Gian Domenico. Uh, butchered his name there. <laughs> Sorry, Carmine. Uh, he's a he, he's an amazing artist. Um, he's done work on the Flash, and we actually worked together on um, Future State Grifter, uh, which is how I got started going down the Wildcats path. And he's just um, he's just the artist who always, no matter what you throw at him, he comes back with something more impressive. And it's it's so fun because we're we're crafting a really visually rich book and wanting to make the world of Gotham feel, you know, like a character and wanting to make um, new characters feel like like as iconic and and as the Joker and want to make the Joker disturbing and creepy and funny, and he just nails all of it and it's it's just a beautiful book. It's got this great energy and you know when it. He, he can do the character stuff so well. And then when it's time to cut loose for the action sequence, he goes crazy. And then uh, we have backup stories um, that are, are very kind of unique. There are eight page backups in every issue that are also about the Joker that are by me and Francesco Francovia. And uh, obviously the man is a master. Um, you know, one of, for me, definitely one of the truly iconic Batman artists um, of the modern age, like just really, a legend and we are doing um something very strange in the backups they're joker stories they're sort of a nod to golden age joker stories they're sort of written to feel like that um they're kind of funny and wacky but there's a reason for that in the book that as the story unfolds you'll see that these aren't just some more joker stories that it's all connected in this way that is very um very intricate and very complex and I think very fun and I think people really like it. It's um, 
we're giving you a lot of comic for your buck is, is our goal. We're giving you a lot of story and a lot to unpack and a lot of mystery to follow. Matt, that is such a brilliant lure strat, stress um, slash. I'm trying to say the word slash, couldn't get it out. It was too perfect. <laughs> but yeah, that was such a brilliant lure slash tease. And uh, anything that's touching upon Golden Age Joker, anything with a dash of Dick Sprang in it, I'm there, mate. You know oh, yeah. Mean? Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been, I've been rereading all that stuff, finding new stuff, consuming it. Just the, just the, the that energy, the, the, that, you know, that, that sort of fearlessness to do anything that, that sort of tickled their fancy in the book. And I was like, you know, and and you're reading these old Batman stories where they're just wild. They're just yeah. so, so crazy. And you're like, you could never do this today. And I kept reading them, being like, you never do this today. And then I kept saying why not <laughs> and like that's sort of our that's sort of our goal and like what me and francesco and and ben and everyone who works on the book is like every time we say well you can't do that someone has to go why not and that's that's where we're at with it so these yeah the, there's they're a real love letter to the to the origins of the joker but also sort of a modern take on that and a modern spin on that and i i think people will really dig it and, and francesco's art on them like it just feels ripped out of those times in such a fun way and then when we start blowing everything up it's it's the fun like he sends in pages and i just laugh at, at what he's drawn they're they're so funny and wild um but yeah it's, it's a true pleasure to work on it that is all music to my bat fan ears and i, I can't i really can't wait to see the book Thanks very much for joining us, as always. We've been talking about uh, Joker, the man who stopped laughing, which you can order from the links attached to our conversation right down here. And uh, we'll see you very soon to talk about another great personal favourite of yours, Wildcats, right, mate? Yep, I'll be back. We'll see you soon. Take care, brother. Bye. Take care. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators. Subscribe right here. See you soon.